Really important topic in cybersecurity is compliance. I think we all know that. And I've got an expert here, a good friend of mine, a guy I've known for a couple of decades. You're going to want to stick around. He knows a lot about this topic and cybersecurity in general. So I hope you stick around and enjoy the discussion. Hi, Matt Amoroso from TAG Cyber. I want to welcome you to our discussion. I have a friend of mine, Larry Whiteside, who's with RegScale, a vendor that does GRC and automated compliance. You're going to like to hear about them. Larry's the, the Chief Information Security Officer there, and he's been at this a long time. I've known him a while, and I think you're going to want to stick around and listen to his uh, insight. So, uh, Larry, nice to see you. How you doing? Hey, I'm great. Good well, to see you. Welcome to New York. Thank you. I love this city. You travel all the time. I do. I yeah, do. That's good. That's good. Hey, listen, to get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about RegScale, and then I want to hear uh, some of your thoughts on the industry. What, what do you guys do over at RegScale? So, RegScale is, uh, is so many terms that can be used for it, right? Next-gen GRC, next-gen com compliance automation tool. Like, there's a number of things, but for us, it's really about helping organizations move away from what we call digital paper, right? The Excel files and all the other things that organizations compile when they're trying to meet their compliance and regulatory needs and basically turn that into an automated thing, right? We want every organization to be able to shift left, as they call it. And, you know, we've adopted shift left just like the rest of the industry because shift left means from going what, from what we do today right. to automation, right? The industry has now become mature enough to understand and accept that automation is a component of what we need because we can't hire or build skills fast enough. So let's find things that are easily automated and just do it. You and I remember when that would be this big paperwork thing, oh, yes. right? It just takes you forever. Excel yep. spreadsheets and <laughs> paper and PDF. So, yep. so you guys streamline that whole thing. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about you before we get into the platform. Sure. You've been at this a long time. Yes. You're in the military, twenty years. Just broadly, do you think this is? Um, think things are getting better? Like, are we getting to the point where maybe we're catching up to the bad guys a little bit, or no. has it been tough? You know? We're not catching up because yeah. the thing is, is the bad guys are actually getting smarter faster yeah. and creating more techniques at a faster scale than we are because we can't hire fast enough. We can't train fast enough. There's not enough. There's more zero days. There's more um, things that are happening bad to our enterprises, right? The ecosystem is changing. We've gone from on-premise to the cloud, right? The ability for the technology community to stand things up without security knowing about them. So as our environment gets more complex, it makes it easier for the bad guys to take advantage of those complexities. And add to that the number of regulations that are just continuing to grow yeah. because entities are starting to say, listen, we must, as, as an organization, treat our consumers in a certain way, so we're going to hold you accountable. Right? So governments and, and you know, PCI councils and others are starting to hold companies accountable. You're watching fines be bigger yeah. than they've ever been because organizations aren't taking into account the things that they're doing to try and innovate, right? And the data is growing broader and broader and broader. If you think about today versus when you and I started, yeah. how much data of ours is out there and has been captured and is being captured by these companies who are trying to utilize these data sets to be better for us as a consumer, which is so, when I look at it, I laugh because I sort of say we asked for this we, we wanted companies to market to us better. We wanted companies to, to shorten the window between us getting to the final of what we were technically looking for. So they said, okay, great, give us all this data. And we just happily consented. Well, now all this data is out there. Now we're like, wait, why is so much data out there about me? Well, because we enabled it and we allowed yeah. it. So now on the cyber side, we've got to deal with the impact of this broad mass amount of data that exists out there in every company and what's happening to it, and how do we protect it, and how do we put controls around it. And now you add these government entities saying, hey, you have all this data, we gotta regulate it. We gotta make sure you're treating it in a certain way. We gotta make sure that you're not misusing it. We gotta make sure that the third parties you're dealing with are handling it properly. Oh, then comes the cloud. And this back-end data <laughs> handling that's happening in the cloud where you've got now APIs moving data back and forth between SaaS entities, between these different data lakes. And you just don't know where before, in order for when you and I started to move data from one place to another, you had to have some sort of VPN in place, right? Connect this VPN to their VPN. Hey, we're going to exchange. Key. It was a lot more involved 
versus what we're dealing with now. So the problem is growing, and I don't see it slowing down. You know, I've always been a big uh, a proponent of compliance. It's absolutely yeah. essential. But see if you agree with this. I think it's been too complicated. Like you end up with oh, a zillion frameworks, you have a big giant team. I always thought that an, one of the most important things you can possibly do is simplify and streamline that compliance process. Is that kind of what RegScale is about? It is, right? So for us, we don't care what the compliance is. We say yeah. pick a framework, a framework. Right. The industry has gotten to a point where it can align everything. Every framework's got a set of controls. And at the end of the day, everything is about controls. Yeah. It's about picking the controls that you are going to meet as an organization and then mapping and aligning those to whatever your regulatory frameworks are that you have to meet, yeah. right? But most people, and you would be amazed at this, and I was actually shocked by this. I've spoken at probably three or four conferences recently over the last few months. And I've asked people to raise their hand if they utilize a framework for the basis of their cybersecurity program. And less than half the room. Really? Less than half the room. I would have guessed that everybody raised their hand. Yeah. I, me too. That was my assumption. Yeah. And the first time I asked the question. You mean they're doing it kind of ad hoc. Yes, they're just doing it based okay. on the fire in front of them. Yeah, right. Right? And that's, that's what's allowing the adversaries to get better faster. Right? Because if you think about it, Cyber used to be something that only big companies did. Small SMBs didn't really, they weren't really utilizing a ton of technology, right? right? Now, with SaaS and with all these other Yeah, they got smaller, powerful systems. They've got yeah. powerful systems that a 10-person company may be using. Yeah. Well, they know nothing about cyber. They know nothing. I had a conversation with the Black Chamber recently. <laughs> they've got 380,000 businesses that they represent, right? Black-owned businesses. Yeah. And they said the majority of them don't have anybody doing cyber for them. That's right? pretty common. And, but yeah. it's sad. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, especially in America, private business is the backbone no, of, I, right? Small business, right, definitely. Small business, Absolutely. It's, it's the backbone of our yeah, country. It sure is. So if they don't know anything about cyber, they have no cyber practice, like it's, it's crazy, but they are being held to the same standards. They've still got to deal with PCI. They've got to deal with a lot of the same things that larger companies have to deal with. So we've got to simplify it. I think there's, there's got to be, but there's got to be some education. And so for us, one of the reasons we have a free module of what we do is because we don't want to continue to have this area of governance risk compliance to be this mystical thing that sits out there. We want people to have free access to a tool that they can utilize regardless of the size of their business. You know what, I, I had a chance to see your platform, a nice demo. I was amazed how much business you guys have in government, like yes. the FISMA and that whole thing. Tell me a right. little bit about that. That, um, that. that seems like that's a a market that was almost unbounded. It's a big, big issues over there. What, what, yeah. How'd you guys get into that so heavily with government? Yeah, so, so one of the beauties of our organization is our leaders, right? So yeah. our two founders, Travis and Anil, come from the government space. They yeah. were practitioners. They were actually doing the job, which is, for me, one of the reasons I joined is to have two leaders who founded and began building a tool to solve the problem that they faced every day in their own yeah. roles is a different model I agree with than you, what I've way. experienced, right? Yeah. So, so having people understand that. And then because of that, they had great relationships based on their 20 plus years of doing this themselves. So when they began doing it and people began hearing the challenge that they face and knowing the challenge that they face based on having being a peer uh, from a relationship standpoint when they were in the federal government, when they saw that these two gentlemen created a technology to answer their own problems, they began to raise their hands and say, hey, me too, please. Because the federal government, we know, is one of the most heavily regulated entities and variables right. there is. And so they tend to throw bodies at the problem. And the reality is, is this is not a problem you can continue to throw bodies at because it just gets unwieldy. I would go on these TV shows and stuff where they'd say, hey, why are all these agencies such a mess like bad, bad FISMA scores? And, and I would always say, because they don't really know what they have. So I like the idea that kind of the first step is data gathering, ingest, right. automation. So I, my, my, tell me if I got this right. Yep. I feel like uh, agencies right now in the US are probably in the stage where they're just starting to get an understanding of what they've got because we haven't really seen them turn the corner toward, as you point out, being ahead of the bad guys. Right. Is that, you think in the next couple of years, you know, now that maybe we've got a little bit more foundational understanding, maybe things get better? Theoretically, right? So 
part of this is agencies are actually now starting to turn the corner as it relates to their network infrastructure, right? Meaning they are looking at the cloud, and potentially utilizing the cloud in some areas, right. which is enabling them to get a handle on- Cloud and SaaS. Cloud right, yeah. and SaaS, right? Yeah. It, it, it's enabling them to get a handle on what they have. When they were just, you know, network infrastructure, handing right. out PCs and devices, they grew so fast and people were transitioning in and out so fast, it was hard for them to keep up. I was, I was mm -hmm. in the DOD, right? I experienced it. I was responsible for information warfare and I worked with the people who did all of our regulatory stuff. It was unwieldy and we didn't do a lot of asset management. We didn't do, I mean, if you think about it, the industry as a whole has not really, and, and that's not just the Fed space, even private sector has not gotten asset management down very well just yet. But as the federal sector moved towards the CAT card, the CAT card got implemented, yeah. they started doing identity very, very well, right? They now have transitioned and put some focus on this infrastructure piece. As they start moving towards the cloud, utilizing SaaS more, it's given them more visibility. And one of the things they did was they actually started recruiting people from private sector to come back into the federal space to take roles. That so, because I know a number of people who have left private sector in a leadership role at some level and gone in to be CISOs in the federal space because they bring a knowledge from what they did in the private sector that the federal space can then bank and utilize better. Is continuous a big part of this whole thing? Like the idea that instead of doing a compliance audit, and then like six months later, you go check again. Right. Like the idea, you need automation for that. Is that a big part of what you guys do? It is, and it's, let's be honest. We all recognized for years that every audit, every pen test, everything that you did as part of it, your regulatory requirement was a point in time test. Yeah, right. And you didn't look at the, you looked at the reports when they came out, but you didn't really act upon the report until about three months before the next time it was audit. Right, because you had so many other fires. Nah, I did it all. I didn't do that. <laughs> right? But you, like, so yeah. many other fires would come up in right. the meantime. Yeah, you're right. That report and all the findings, except the one or two really, really big ones, yeah. got pushed down. And That's now here you, you are, three months prior to the next one, you're like, oh, crap. I need to go out and we got to do this because the auditors can't come back in and yeah. know that we didn't do 85% of this open report. Open vulnerabilities usually. Open yeah. vulnerabilities, right. right, you know, yeah. un unmitigated risk, all these right. things, right? So continuous is the only way, is to continually look at it. But th the beauty of continuous is alignment, right? And what I mean by alignment, it's aligning to controls. If everybody should be utilizing a framework as the basis for the cybersecurity program to build it, right, then, and there are controls that come in every framework, and you can map those controls to all of your regulatory things. If you're building based on those controls and you have a way to measure those controls on a daily basis, you know not just mm. where your risk lie, but also how you are or are not meeting your regulatory obligations in real time versus the point in time measurement that we used to take that you then just waited, waited for the moon to come around this, <laughs> the earth and then you, you, you hit it again, right? So, so it's, it's a much better process, it's a much better program and it's a much better way to actually, what I call bring compliance and cyber closer together versus the adversarial relationship that we're accustomed to. So people who are watching right now who say, hey, this sounds pretty good. What should, should they go on the website? Yeah. Spell, is a POC a good way to go? There's a what number of different do? ways. One of the things that we've done is we've created a community edition, right? To allow people to, hey, come in, right? Kick the tires, play mm. with them. You can install it wherever you want. So you can go to community.rightscale.com, right? Play around with the tool yourself. You and just download it and use it. Download it and Whoa. use it, right? So that's, that, that, that's an easy way because, again, we didn't want to make this... Um, we didn't want to segregate people from being able to use it because we recognize the small to medium sized businesses, they need this too. And maybe they can't afford an enterprise version and all the bells and whistles. Right, That's right. great, right? But use the tool. The other way is to go to our website and just ask for more information, right? You yeah. can contact us and someone will reach out to you and get back to you and, and help you understand what this journey could look like for you. So community edition I can use to try it out. Enterprise is how that you guys pay the bills. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's how I get nice suits. <laughs> Look at you. I got a real hard technical question for you. Shoot. Tell me about your son playing football. That's awesome. Your son <laughs> plays, uh, plays college ball. Right? Yeah, he plays at the Naval Academy. I'm super proud of him. 
Well, sometime I'm going to hit you up for some tickets, right? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming by. Always a pleasure to yes, see you. Keep up the me. good work, and thanks for you, what you do in our industry. I appreciate Thank you. it. I appreciate you as well. Good to see you. The rest of you watching, we'll see you next time.